Hey, my friends. Happy Sunday. How are you? Here in East Tennessee, it is gorgeous. And I'm on my front porch. And it's amazing. So it's a good day when I can sit out here. Now it's also a little bit dangerous because I've noticed a lot of people are doing yard work and um, one of my neighbors has some tools he's getting out so it might get kind of noisy. But I had to hop on and share with you today. Um, if you are reading Waiting on God by Andrew Murray with me and if you're on Instagram you heard some of this already. But um, so many of you have responded to me about this quote and what I shared this morning on Insta Stories that I thought I would come over here and chat about the topic of disappointment. So the quote that I shared from today's reading, day three, is one of my favorite quotes from this book. However, it wasn't my favorite write off. When I first read this quote, it just did not sit well with me. So let me read it to you and then we're going to chat about um, the disappointments of life. Okay, um, we may rest assured that the one who made us for himself, that he might give himself to us and in us, will never disappoint us. In waiting on him, we shall find rest and joy and strength and the supply of every need. Good morning, Afton. So when I first read this quote, I almost felt betrayed. I was like, what? God never disappoints? I find myself disappointed fairly often. I look around, I see things that are disappointing. People disappoint me. My circumstances disappoint me. Heck, I disappoint me. So when I read this quote, I just, it just startled me and I couldn't get past it. And I, it took time for me to think through, what does this mean? God will never disappoint us. And so I began thinking about disappointment in general. And what does that look like? God, the one that we place our hope in, the only true source of hope and peace and joy and love. He will not disappoint us. So what, what does that mean? Does that mean we're a bad Christian or we have no faith if we have disappointments? That's where I, the first time I read that quote, I was like, well, what is this, what is this saying about me? Because I feel disappointment. But what if we looked at disappointment differently? What if we looked at disappointment as a good thing? What if we let the disappointments of this life and of this world that we live in right now, what if we let those disappointments point us to the one who truly will never disappoint us? What if we allowed the disappointments of this life, of our circumstances, of the relationships, of the people in our lives, of ourselves. What if we let those disappointments become almost a trigger in our mind to reframe our thoughts? So I have not perfected this yet. I still get disappointed in my humanness. I lose sight of the big picture. I lose sight of eternity. I lose sight of um, God's sovereignty and I'm just you know admitting that to you but I am asking the Holy Spirit to remind me in those moments when I feel disappointment I'm asking him to remind me to let that disappointment point me to him what if in my most disappointing moments what if in the biggest disappointments of my life I realized my tremendous dependency on Christ. What if in all the disappointments of life that made me so desperate and needy for him? Is that a bad thing? In those moments, 
where we learn to cling to Jesus and not cling to the hope that someone is going to change, not cling to the hope that something is going to change, not cling to the hope of getting out of the house and all of this being over. There's some power tools next door. I hope you can still hear me. Um, what if we were reminded of where our true hope comes from? What if our hope wasn't based on the circumstances of this life, but on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ? And I believe that God can use the disappointments in life to turn us to him and to remind us that he is our shepherd. We lack nothing. We may not like what we see. Our circumstances are never going to be ideal while we are here on earth. People are going to disappoint us. Relationships are going to disappoint, disappoint us. Our country is going to disappoint us. Our leaders, our church, our family, our friends, our children, our homes. We are going to disappoint ourselves. But if we realize if we stay in that place of disappointment without allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to us and help us to fix our eyes on Jesus despite the disappointments, that is when we stay in that place of disappointment. So I can even use that as a, it's a powerful tool in my life. If I find myself continually, continually disappointed, that is the reminder to me that I am not putting my hope in the right thing. I am not putting my hope and my faith in the right place if I am continually in that place of disappointment. But if instead I can allow the disappointment to be a trigger for my mindset, for my thoughts, to reframe, to refocus, to redirect to the one who will never disappoint, then, then, I can be filled with hope and peace and joy even when I'm disappointed, even when someone lets me down, even when I'm brokenhearted, even when I'm grieving, even when things are not going how I want them to go. In the disappointment, we can be thankful, we can be at peace, we can have joy, joy and sorrow can exist in the same place and I just that whole paradigm shift after it's been a few years since the first time I read this quote but I I can just distinctly remember the Lord teaching me that he could use my disappointments for good and it is good for us to acknowledge and live in such a place of total surrender that we realize we are totally dependent upon him. And when we stay in that place of disappointment, we can learn and we can realize, okay, you know what? I'm not putting my hope in the right thing if I'm continually in this place. So I wanna read that quote to you one more time. And then I have a verse I'm gonna share with you. We may rest assured that the one who made us for himself, that he might give himself to us and in us, will never disappoint us. In waiting on him, we shall find rest and joy and strength in the supply of every need. So he's not saying bad things aren't gonna happen. He's not saying that there aren't things that are gonna happen in this world. But in the brokenness of this life, we can fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross with joy. With joy he endured that suffering because he knew that those momentary disappointments were serving a purpose, were pruning us, growing us, stretching us, and pointing us to our only true hope. So in those disappointments, we can be reminded that he is our shepherd and we lack nothing. I'm gonna to read to you from Psalm 23 from the Passion Translation. The Lord is my best friend and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. He tra his tracks take me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores me and revives my life. 
He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. What if we could still bring glory and honor to him and show the world the saving grace of Jesus Christ? What if we could do that even in our disappointments? Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, even when you take me through various disappointments, even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I'll never be lonely for you are near. You become my delicious feast, even when my enemies dare to fight. You anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my heart overflows. So why would I fear the future? For your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I will return to your glorious presence to be forever with you. I hope this helps you to consider disappointments a good thing. Let those disappointments turn us to Jesus. I hope you all have a great Sunday afternoon.